That's a gun we got just a couple of days ago. This one came in from EMF. Box is really nice, nice shape, everything. And this would be an 1851 um, Sheriff Steel, they call it, and 44 caliber, 5.5 inch. So let's get inside this box here and take a look at it. Kind of go kind of easy on the boxes. Sometimes you get in a rush here and you rip these tabs off from the sides. And let's just not do that. Okay. All right, we've got our instruction and safety manual. That's good, and that's in the top lid. Underneath that, we're looking at loading and shooting instructions and corporate office's letter from EMF on return policies. And hopefully that won't have to happen. And here's what she looks like inside. Let's pull it out, okay. Put the box aside. Get her out of the plastic. Oh, definitely got a lot of oil on that. And first impression, looking pretty nice. That's always a good idea to check and see if there's any major gouges or anything in the in the wood or scratches or anything. I'm not seeing anything here. So great. Okay, next thing I want to take the barrel off and. Have a look down inside. Sometimes they haven't been cleaned after test firing. We've run into that a couple times. Got a wooden, kind of a wooden pull spin thing here I've made to sometimes you can push those barrel wedges out and sometimes you gotta use a little persuasion here the first time or so. Okay, that didn't come bad. Let's see this one when it comes all the way out. Sometimes that's supposed to just kind of hang on there. It depends on the length of the, the barrel wedge right here. This one's short enough so it'll clear the screw. will be able to angle, angle it because it's short enough and come out. Okay, let's see if we can slide the barrel off then. We'll rotate the cylinder a little bit. Use the loading lever. Okay. Well, that's decent. I like that. Okay, I'm going to look down at and... No, oh, that's just shiny. Looks like a 1 in 30 twist. I'm not seeing the real fast twist on it, so I'm thinking we got about a 1 in 30 on that. It's um, like about an eighth of a turn and five inches. Maybe a little more than an eighth. Eighth to a quarter, anyway. Okay, got the barrel off. That looks great. Cylinder. Looking down there. Looks perfect. Locks up. A fairly light trigger pull. I'd say maybe two pounds, no creep to it. Maybe even a little less than two. I could measure that and see. Okay, we'll see how it goes back together. I like to be able to push these in. Sometimes you can't. You gotta use a little persuader like this somehow or Whatever, but let's see if this one goes. Yeah, a little force there. She's back in. Barrel wedge. It's back in. I'm going to whack that a little bit and see what that does to our end plate here. Just a little bit of clearance there. I don't know how many thaw, but about where it wants to be. Let's see if we can tighten that up to bring this barrel, if you actually pound this wedge in more, it'll actually force the barrel up against the cylinder here, and that would not be a good thing, but let's just see. That thing is not moving. That might be a good thing. We might have get knocked back down there. We might have our arbor set on this thing to the right length. In other words, when we take it apart like this, slide that arbor back in the barrel. Let's see where our, where our pins here are. Take 
the little forks here. Well, I'm thinking that that is actually bottoming out like it should in the bottom of that recess down in there. In fact, I can see a little grease on the end of that where this, where this has been hitting it right there. Probably doesn't show up on the camera, but... And that's a good thing because what it'll do is not allow you to wham that barrel wedge in so far that you actually tweak the tweak this um, barrel up against. I see it, it's pulling on the on the barrel is what it's doing. You get your pivot point down here with this with these two locked into the pins, and as you tighten that barrel wedge up, your barrel is going to move like this. You'd rather it not come all the way against the cylinder. So if this is this long enough and just fits into this recess just right will not allow that to happen. Now, that's a very good thing. Okay. It's not in there. Anyway, the reason I took that uh, cylinder out is kind of to check my my uh, sighting line here. Now I'll do that with a straight edge. Now, I'm going to lay that across the top of the front sight and the back of the hammer. And I'm going to see how much clearance I've got right here between the uh, barrel here where our forcing cone is and this uh, flat edge. And I'm seeing well not a whole lot. So I've got a slight incline up which means the gun is tipped down. I'm still going to guess it'll shoot a little high. I've got the gun apart here and talk for a second about the barrel wedge. As long as I've been shooting the guns I've never given that too much um, thought except that it is needed to keep the barrel on the gun and the further you pound this wedge in here the tighter that gets in fact you can actually bring that in to the point on some guns where it'll actually pinch actually pinch the cylinder stop the rotation of the of the cylinder it'll drive in like this and it'll end up um, doing this I'm exaggerating of course but the only thing that stops it would be when the end of the barrel here hits the actual uh, cylinder and in order to Cause that not to happen a lot of times. I just haven't driven this barrel wedge in as far as it as it could go, and that you know that's like I say that's about all thought I've given to it. And I saw a comment on one of my videos where one of the fellows was wish I could remember the name. I could give, give him credit for this, and I'm sure there are other videos out there probably talk about it too. But he was ending up putting some like liquid steel on the end here of the of the arbor so that it would end up butting up against the and where this is bored out and stop that thing then from coming in and, and pinching the pinching the cylinder when you drove the barrel wedge in. There we can see that actually is some grease on the end of that thing down there and that's not just drilled out with a drill that's actually uh, machined out as a flat area and that flat area would be where the end here of our of our arbor is going to butt up against. And if things are done just correctly, as apparently they are in this gun, then when that butts up against that stop right there, that's as far as that barrel can, can move in. I can then tighten the, uh, tighten the wedge, add a little extra tension on that, and all it'll do is, is bring that um, up here, make a, a nice tight fitting on the gun. So I feel that's really a good, a good situation the way this thing is um, uh, designed or machined out. So we have our Piata gun here. This is uh, what they call their sheriff's model, steel frame, and it's got the five and a half inch barrel, 44 caliber. We'll call him Mr. Shorty, and we're going to load this up and and see what we can do. All right, second string coming up. We moved our point of aim a little left and up a little bit, and we'll see if that keeps him on the paper this time.
it up real well. I'm not sure where that one went. Might have doubled the first hole though. I think that was six. That's not looking real bad down there. I think it looks pretty good in the camera. We'll see what it looks like close up. Well, here's two of the five groups that we shot with our Piata here, the Sheriff's model, and this last group ended up having a, a six-shot group that measured less than two inches, more like an inch and a half. Second target that we shot, we had a little larger group size and also it uh, was shooting to the right here so the difference between these two things is a couple of couple of things when we switched the hammer on this last group over here and when we cocked the gun back with the original hammer in it I could see it was fading a little bit to the right so causing it to shoot to the right possibly the whole board through it was uh, the original hammer just a tad off nothing a person couldn't live with second thing about the two groups is that the groups we, fi we fired here first of all were a little larger as far as group size goes and I determined the reason for that because I had uh, mistakenly mixed some mixed some 447's or 446 with the 4 451 round balls and I've got two molds they're both labeled 451 but one of them casts a 446 so the targets um, 1 through 4 were actually a mixture of the 451 and the 4 uh, 447 ball and I think that's one of the reasons that, that our groups were a little larger. So overall I was really impressed with the uh, gun itself, workmanship, balance, feel of the gun, really great. And targeted shot up here, um, can't expect any better than that at 21 yards. So I would say if anybody wants to take a look at getting a gun like this with a shorter barrel, this is one they should definitely consider.